In this short video, we're going to discuss how we can model fixed charges with integer programming. Often, in economic activities, we have to deal with both fixed and variable costs. Think about producing some type of good. To produce it, you need to pay some fixed cost if anything is produced at all. And this is pretty much the cost of setting up the machines to produce such a good. Then, once you have set up all the machines, you deal with some variable cost, and this is generally linear in the amount produced. So the more good you produce, the more variable cost you have to pay. If we use a variable y, non-negative, to model the amount of the good that you produce, then the total cost of production will be 0 if y equal to 0, and, as soon as y is strictly positive, then it will be c plus hy, where c is your fixed cost and hy is your variable cost. Since c and h represent costs, then both the scalars should be strictly positive. In particular, this cost is not linear in y, and in fact we can visualize it in the graph here on the left. Along the horizontal axis we have the variable y, and on the vertical axis we have the corresponding production cost. As you can see, for y equal to 0, the cost is equal to 0, but then it jumps to a positive amount as soon as y is strictly positive, and then it keeps increasing in a linear way. So, how can we model fixed charges with integer programming? The idea is to introduce a new binary variable x that encodes whether y is strictly positive or y is equal to 0. Let's say that x is equal to 1 if and only if y is strictly positive. If we could encode this if and only if condition, then the cost of variable y can be written as a cx plus hy. In fact, if y is equal to 0, then hy is equal to 0, and because of the if and only if, we have x equal to 0, and so also cx will be equal to 0. So the total production cost will be 0 as expected. On the other hand, if y is positive, then from the if and only if, we have x equal to 1, and so the total production cost will be c plus hy as expected. So, everything we have to do is encode this if and only if with integer programming. To do so, we will need some upper bound capital M on the value of variable y. You can think of it as an upper bound on the amount of your good that you will ever produce. Once you have this upper bound M, then we can write the following system of constraints. We have y less than or equal to mx, x binary, and y greater than or equal to 0. So what happens when x is equal to 0? Well, in that case, we obtain from the first inequality that y is equal to 0 as well. And this is precisely the implication from right to left in this if and only if. On the other hand, if x is equal to 1, then we have uh, y less than or equal to m, which is an inequality that is always valid by definition of m, and therefore we obtain no further restriction on y. So as a result, we didn't exactly obtain our if and only if. In fact, our system of constraints allows for the possibility x equal to 1 and y equal to 0, which was not allowed instead in our if and only if. The key observation here is that this doesn't really matter. Intuitively, it is because this configuration will never be optimal so it will never show up in an optimal solution to your integer program. But let's understand for a moment why this configuration will never be optimal. Well, this is the configuration where you produce nothing, because y is equal to 0, but by setting x equal to 1, you are still paying your fixed costs. But of course this solution will never be optimal, because if you replace x equal to 1 with x equal to 0, you will obtain a solution with the same y, but with a lower cost, because you don't pay such a fixed cost. At this point, you might be confused, in a way, by the simplicity of these constraints. Well, don't forget that this will not be the entirety of your integer program, 
which will generally be some complicated production integer programming problem. So you should think of this constraint set as an addition to your integer program to be able to model some fixed charges. At this point, I leave as an exercise to you to prove that the formulation that you obtain with the addition of these constraints is indeed valid. To do so, you should prove the following two directions. First, for every real-world solution, there exists a feasible solution to the formulation with cost equal or lower. And secondly, for every feasible solution to the formulation, there is a real-world solution with cost equal or lower. Once you have shown that the obtained formulation is valid, I have one more question for you. Does it matter how tight the upper bound M is? In fact, if you think about it, and let's say that for your variable Y, you can use an upper bound capital M equal to 10, then of course you can also use a larger upper bound, like for example 12. In this way, you will obtain a different formulation, simply because you changed the number M over here. And the question is, can you say whether one of the two formulations is better than the other one? And the answer is yes. You should be able to prove that the larger the capital M is, the worse your formulation becomes. Intuitively, you can just look at the feasible region defined by this inequality alone. This inequality only involves two variables, so you can visualize it in the plane. Now, the smaller capital M is, the smaller the set of non-negative points that satisfy this condition will be because the slope of the line y equal to mx will decrease. And therefore, you can use our definition of better formulation to prove that the smaller the upper bound is, the better formulation you obtain. So overall, this is a way to model fixed charges using integer programming. These formulations are often used in practice for this reason, but in general, this type of formulations that are called big M formulations due to the fact that M is an upper bound on the production quantity are not really good because they tend to produce weak bounds in branch and bound. Therefore, generally, if you have an alternative to using a big M formulation, it is often preferred. And this ends our short video on fixed charges.